Well, I grew up in in Germany, and um, and it was the records I guess I, I started listening to. It was all rock and roll and rock based, and uh, and uh, British Invasion became part of it too. And uh, and eventually, you start reading your liner notes on the records, and then you figure out oh, who's getting songwriting credits. It's not the dude that actually recorded the record; it's somebody else. And and you stumble across the name Johnson a few times, and you start wondering where this Johnson character is coming mm -hmm. from and how he's anchored into that. And and all of a sudden, you get more and more and deeper into it. And um, and after so many years, I'm still discovering new stuff about it. And uh, I guess it's a never earned. Uh, never ending a learning curve about the blues and its root. The guitar in blues music grabbed me and pulled me in. Uh, specifically, uh, one album did it for me way back, Rolling Stones, Get Your Yaya's Out Live. Uh, and then from there, reading and studying about the Rolling Stones' love of blues and everything they were doing, and it just sucked me in from Muddy Waters on down the line. The blues found me probably back in 1971, uh, Almond Brothers' first album, and I'm looking at the album when we really could hold albums and you had that tactile experience, and looking at the names on the back and seeing, you know, M. Morganfield, you know, and, and uh, W. Dixon and looking at the members of the band and saying, no, there's okay, so who are these guys? Having to go to a place called the library, okay? This is a building. It had books and all this reference stuff. Not a machine. <laughs> um, and slowly, you know, finding that out. And then I also had some pretty cool records that I got to listen to from their albums and then started buying music from there and realized that that was my love. I mean, yes, the British Invasion and all the bands Led Zeppelin and at one not and realizing that they, that's where their influences were. I think for me it was a natural progression. My folks listened to a lot of music when I was a kid and I was growing up in the 50s. So it was a lot of, you know, Nat King Cole, the Dorsey Brothers, Benny Goodman and stuff like that. And you, you know, you heard that kind of music and you felt this progression through it. And then as you got introduced to rock and roll as you got older and you're listening to Led Zeppelin and stuff like this and they're doing these really cool original tunes that you found out were written by some old guy a long time ago and it just you felt the passion in, in the writing and the performance and it, it brings you to that natural spot where you actually find out the beginning of the blues. In, in junior high school I had a desperate desire to be cool so I started reading everything I could about all of the rock stars and what I discovered was they all had mentors and influences that were not rock stars. They were Sonny Lamb Slim and Slim Harpo and, you know, Sleepy John Estes. And it's like, you know, my, my ADD addled brain said, wait a minute, who are these guys? So I started delving deeply into, into these guys. And, it was it was an epiphany of music. It's like this this music says something. It means something. You know, these people are talking life in in everyday struggles. And from that day forward, you know, I, I had two record collections: the ones that I let all my cool friends know I had, right. and the ones that I listened to when they weren't there. <laughs> all right.